Hello, and welcome to a tutorial video for a building technique that I think hasn't been done before, um, or at least I haven't seen anyone else do it. So I thought I would kind of share this new thing that I had figured out. Um, and I figured it out because I was doing a build for my survival world, and I kind of accidentally stumbled upon it, but it reminded me of some technique in computer graphics called anti-aliasing. And anti-aliasing essentially looks like what's right in front of us. Over here on the right is what you'd call anti-aliased, and over on the left is what you call aliased. And so aliased is the thing you don't want, and anti-aliased is the thing you do want. And the reason why you do want it is because it makes the line look smoother. Because um, if we look over at the left, it's very jaggedy, right? Because uh, in computer graphics, you're talking about a screen made up of pixels, and you don't want it to look like it's made of pixels, even though it is. Um, and the same sort of thing applies to Minecraft, where you're trying to make it look less like it's made of blocks um, and more like a straight edge. And so in computer graphics, you're using this anti-aliasing to essentially blur the lines wherever it kind of meets, uh, you know, a harsh contrast to try to make it look smoother. Um, and if we look at the actual blocks for what I used here, you can see that I still am using the same stone that's over here, but I made the stone a bit thinner and the white next to it a bit thinner and kind of like blended them together um, with some other block choices that would blend it. And if you look up close to it, it looks kind of like chaos. And this is something about anti-aliasing that's very important and something that will apply to this technique is that if you're very close to the thing you're trying to do this technique for, it's not really going to work because this doesn't look blurry. This just looks like a mess up close. But if you're far enough away, it does kind of look blurry and it does kind of look like a good straight line. And the kind of cool thing is that it's further and further as you get back, it almost looks better and better. And it really depends on what resolution the screen you're looking at is and how far away you are from your screen. Um, so I've got a 1440p monitor, so for me, it's going to be different. It's a pretty big monitor as well, but for you, it might be a different point from me backing up when it kind of looks like really good. Uh, but one thing you'll notice also is that the left side that's got the staircase, as you get further and further back, it becomes less and less blocky looking, and it naturally just becomes like a straight line as well. And now, at least for me, looking this far away from it, it's probably really small on your screen, so I'm sorry but uh, they look almost the same now. You can't really tell the difference, at least not from here. So this technique is good for like, a, a, I mean, most ranges that are not super close because even far away, it'll still look good. It's like, it doesn't stop looking good, but then you just didn't need to use it then. So I guess the kind of question is, why would you want to use this anti-aliasing effect, right? In computer graphics, the most common use cases is probably text on the screen. Um, text is usually a very small thing and it'll be made up of only a few pixels because it's only taking up that small little chunk. Um, and so if you didn't anti-alias it, it would look kind of pixelated. And when you blur it out and kind of smooth it, it looks like it becomes smooth lines. It doesn't look like the text is blurry. It looks like it's smooth. That's the kind of genius of it. And it's also used in video games, which is probably where most of you have heard about anti-aliasing as it's usually like an option in the video settings and you usually don't know which one to select and you're like, these aren't descriptive enough. I'm going to pick the one that looks like it's furthest down the list because that must be the best one because, you know, that's what you do. Um, but it's essentially making things look less pixelated or in Minecraft's case, less blocky. Um, and so if you're using something that's a flat surface, this is an example of something that's built into the wall, right? It's very flat. Then this is kind of how you do it. You take the color that's like next to it, take the main color here and you kind of blend them together. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. This could be like the edge of a, a color. So like this whole part could be stone over here and you're just blurring that one side and it would still have the, the same effect of making that, that edge between the two colors look much smoother from further away. Um, but the case that I sort of ran into when I was originally coming across this as a building technique and not just a computer graphics technique um, was when you have a background that isn't just like a block, like it isn't built into a wall. It's 
just got the sky behind it or whatever behind it. So I'm using an example here where these are all like hovering away from the wall, right? So you're not built into it. So you can't just build a gradient because if you were to build a gradient with white, you know, to make it blend into this white background, you don't know that's that's always going to be behind it. Because let's say you have this, it could be the grass behind it, it could be that tree, it could be the sky, which is kind of white down there, it gets more blue up there though. And so I'm using glass in this case to do the blending because the glass will make whatever the background color is darker according to the color that you have there. I'm using a grayscale here, but if you were to use, you know, some other colors, you would use those colored stained glass to kind of blend it, which does create a problem of if you're trying to use the glass technique to do the anti-aliasing, you only have so many colors to work from. If you're using just solid blocks, you've got all the blocks in Minecraft. That's a lot of like blending options. This is not a lot of blending options, but it's kind of handy that you can do it. And I'll show you an example of it in just a bit, but we've got the just very blocky look that's just like full blocks over here. We've got a staircase look. We've got staircases going occasionally. But one thing you'll note is that staircases are kind of meant for a 45 degree angle. And I purposely made an angle here that's larger than 45 degrees. And so it doesn't look quite right. It looks a little kind of wiggly. And it's like, I don't know, if you zoom away again, far enough away, it's going to, of course, look straight. But if you're kind of in that medium distance where you're somewhat closer, it kind of looks wiggly and it doesn't look the best. And so this is sort of as like another option. Um, I don't know if the staircase, the staircase just might be better in some cases, but sometimes the glass is better. This is the like thing about these building techniques is you have options now to use if you know how to do this. And so if you have a roof that's kind of this like steep shape, let's say, Instead of using uh, a staircase technique like most people would, you could try using a glass technique on the edge of that roof, and it might make that line look even smoother and less Minecrafty, which is kind of cool. And so we get over here to the actual real world example, a real Minecraft example. Um, I've got my build here, and I'm just going to give you a second to look at it and see if you can figure out where I used anti-aliasing. And you can probably already figure it out because I had mentioned that there was glass involved and the sky and the background and stuff. So it has to be something on the edge, but it is up here on the dome. You can see that the edges right here have a bunch of green stained glass panes. Um, even the front and kind of like these parts here also have some green stained glass. It's kind of hard because they're like, they're very vertical and sticking out when you're looking at it from this direction. Um, and when you look at it from far away, you can't tell that there's like glass panes there as part of it. And because you can put it all the way around the dome, it doesn't matter what angle you're looking at it, it is helping you smooth out the edges. And so I think that's kind of cool. We also have it on the, the smaller one down here um, that's also helping smooth out those smaller domes. And you might not notice it at first just how much it's helping, but I've copied over the build over here, but I've removed all those glass pieces. And so... If we look at it straight on, the straight on is sort of like the worst case scenario for this dome, um, because if we're looking at it at an angle, let's take this non-anti-alias technique dome, um, when you're looking at it at an angle, it does look pretty smooth just because of how the blocks were built into that angle and there's lots of different little small things sticking out. Um, same with this one. This one maybe looks a bit smoother from that same angle. It's hard to tell. Um, but if you look at it straight on, like I said, this is like the worst case view of it, um, you'll see that it kind of looks blocky around the edges. You know, it's very staircase effect. Um, you know, if this was computer graphics, we talk about how it looks very pixelated or aliased, um, I guess is the proper term. Um, and this, the small ones look even worse because there's only so many blocks to work with. So it's kind of hard to get a proper dome without it just looking very blocky. But now let's go take a look at the anti-aliased one. And you can tell that those lines are much smoother around this whole thing. Um, and even the small ones are also smoother. I mean, you saw over here just how blocky they looked. And then if you look at the small domes over here, they look less blocky. It's not like it doesn't look blocky at all because there is still edges to it, but it's 
definitely blurring things more than, you know, not doing that. It, it looks better than doing it this way. So I hope this video has been helpful, that you've learned a bit of something, even if this is a technique that's not going to be used everywhere in your builds. Uh, maybe the next time you're building a dome or just anything with a, a, a line of sorts that you want to make smoother, where it's a curved line or a straight line or whatever, hopefully this technique can help. You know, when stairs and slabs don't get the job done, maybe try blending things with color and you'll find that it looks just as smooth. Let me know if you enjoyed the video in the comments, and if you guys did, maybe I'll make more of these types of videos. I'll try to come up with other fun building techniques that I can share with you all. And I'll see you in the next video.